So today I want to talk about Slavoj Zizak and some of his uh, recent statements and provide some commentary on those. Now, first of all, let me just state how I know of Slavoj Zizak. Uh, I think I first was introduced to him by through documentaries, documentaries on him and also documentaries that he hosted, like the Pervert Guides. And there's also um, interviews in print that I read and numerous interviews that he has um Conducted in video and with various media outlets. I didn't really read his books. Um, so I was more or less interacting with him as a public intellectual. Um, and it's also, I have this, the uh, <laughs> Slavo Zizak graphic guy introducing. I love his introducing books because they're a great way to uh, be introduced to different topics. And you can gain knowledge in chunks and you can expand on that knowledge if you wish in other places through other more scholarly works but they're a great way to start off on a topic but you know let me discuss the issues that i've had with with uh Zizak at this time because it seems like he's moving further to the right on certain issues and i think this is counterproductive in the long run because i think when you have these left-wing uh personalities agreeing with the right on these important issues, it just strengthens the right wing because they become almost like fellow travelers. They create positions, even if they're coming from a different place, that are parallel with what the right is doing. And I think that's dangerous. It just destroys any attempt for the left to fight some of these right wing um, initiatives because they're being squeezed from both sides, from the far left and from the far right. Uh, so that's really a dangerous thing. When you look at uh, his uh, positions on the refugee crisis, where he seemed to be in parallel with the uh, far right and his demonization of the presence of the refugees, seemingly thinking they were there as a threat to Western values, which was just the same position that the right had. You know, I'm a big believer in unity of people, on um, people locally, you know, individual level, as groups, and on a national level. So I'm very against people demonizing different groups and seeing their presence as dangerous and using individual incidences, in which there always will be individual incidences that people can, people um, of any group may um, be engaged in, and using those incidences to demonize the entire group. I think it's just a it's a it's a tactic that racists are normally very comfortable in doing, and I think it's a very dangerous tactic because you always find those type of examples, and using them at, to brand an entire group is just very dangerous. So I have very much issues with that, and then his his um, if I was American, I would vote for Trump comments, which was very dangerous as well. Um, now. When I looked at the election, U.S. election, Trump versus Hillary, now, for me, I'm to the left of what Hillary Clinton's platform. But when I looked at the issues, she was much closer to my, um, my um, viewpoints on the issues than Trump was. You know, if I looked at the environment, uh, looked at what Hillary stated and what Trump has stated, Hillary was much preferable. If you look at the minimum wage, Hillary is preferable. If I look at health care, Hillary is preferable. So though, although I'm further to the left of where she is, she is preferable to where Trump is. And so it just made it clear that the person that was, because it only came down to two people, it's either going to be Trump or Hillary were going to be president. And the issue here in the United States is that we have a winner-take-all system. To, to issue a protest vote, because in, in actuality, my views are more closer to where the, where the Green Party is. But we have a winner-take-all system. So a protest vote can only act as a spoiler in our system. You, If you really care about the issues... And you want to see some type of change, even if it's just going to be the most gradual change or even the status quo. 
you almost have to vote some people stay for the lesser of two evils. You only have you don't have any choice. Um, right now, the far left in the United States doesn't have any political party or power. Excuse me. I think a lot of people were ex very excited about Bernie Sanders, and as he as the gap when the, when the um, Democratic primary started was so wide between him and Hillary, and he that gap started to sh to uh, shrink. People became very excited because his positions were so farther to the left, and we've seen in a major candidate within the Democratic Party, but he fell short. And I think the left had to be very honest about him falling short and learn from that, so that that so that any person in the future who uh, who tries to follow that Bernie Sanders blueprint, they can improve on what Bernie did. Whether that's going to be Bernie or someone else in the future, I don't know. Um, in 2020, Bernie's going to be almost 80 years old, I believe. So it's going to be very difficult for him to do it, although he might have the energy to do it. I don't know. But um, anyone following his blueprint has to has to build on the things that he had, that he com he accomplished and also do other things because Bernie wasn't able to reach everyone. So, you know, you have this purity argument where you have people who did not feel that Hillary was... Um, what we needed politically, a fake leftist, as, you, as some people describe her. And in that, they decided either to vote third party or vote for Trump, which I don't know if e e neither is, a, is, a, um, is an adequate solution for right now in 2016. Voting for Trump and voting for the opposite of your political values, it seems counterproductive to strengthen the right wing it's just ridiculous to me to argue for that the right taking power would unify the left and shake things up. It could destroy the left. <laughs> you know? um, you're going to be fighting against things that you already gained through previous the previous administration. You're going to be fighting for things just to stay just to stay play to stay in the same place. You're going to be fighting things that you already had a victory over. And it's just a ridiculous situation. Um, and I don't know if anyone would say that situation for anything else in life. I mean, if I'm struggling with my weight, I would, uh, how many people would come up to you and say, well, if you know, if you're struggling with weight loss, what you need to do is get fatter first or put on weight first in order to gain control of your weight loss. Um, if you're struggling with poverty, would someone come up to you and say, well, what you need to really do is get poor first in order to try to get out of your poverty situation. So this whole situation that we need to move further to the right in order to somehow in the future move further to the left. I just think that it's, um, I don't know if there's any examples that anyone can point to outside of examples that of extremism, of violence, or saying something like that. Um, and I think that's where it is. It's an extremist argument where if people that cannot get the politics that they want or the political reality right now where they were they embracing destroying the system? It's the only it's the position only an extremist will take. So I have a lot of issues with that. Um, I think that any fight politically is going to be long and hard, and you're going to have to fight every inch of the way to try to get the political re reality that you want. Everyone would like that to be quick, but it might take decades to do. And um, and I don't think the way forward is to move backwards. So I have a lot of issues with. Um, current things that Z uh, Slavo Zizek and other people on the left have become proponents of. I think it's through, just through despair that they're embracing these things. And I hope to see a, a, a better political solution in the future. And I hope to see a realignment of his views so that he can become a more productive voice on the left, like he was at one time.